You want to be the person that if you could pick your best friend, you know, that, that you would have the same qualities. It's one of the most important exercises that you can ever do in your life. Some other common uh, keystone habits are... Rise and shine. It's espresso time. <laughs> hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I am not a morning person. But when you start your day with a routine that inspires you, like watching one of these videos, it will change your life. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee, know that I believe in you, and get ready for a shot of espresso from Warren Buffett. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. What other habits did you cultivate in your 20s and your 30s that you now see as being foundational to your success as a business person? Yeah, well, I, I knew a lot about what I do uh, when I was 20. I mean, I, I, I really read a lot and, and uh, I aspired to learn everything that I could about the subject. So intellectually, I knew a lot. I did not know a lot about human behavior. I mean, that that you can't learn really out of reading books, but it's, it's very important to understand people. And uh, I say to the students, you know, just imagine you could buy or you, or you could be given 10% of the future earnings of one person that you know among everybody you know. Now, are you going to pick the person that's the smartest? Are you going to pick the person that can dance the best or that can run the fastest or anything like that? That's the right height. No, anything. No, no. There, you're going you're gonna to put pick the person that has the right habits, that, that is cheerful, generous, gives other people credit for what they do, you know. And when you look at all of the qualities that you admire in other people, mm -hmm. which would cause you to pick that person, say to yourself, which of those qualities can't I have myself? Because they are, you know, you determine whether you have them. So just write them down on a piece of paper. What, who is the person that you admire the most or like the best? Why do I like them? and just write down and then say, which of these can I do myself? And the truth is you right. can do them. And then you also, if you really want to carry it to the next extreme, you pick the person you dislike the most. And why do you dislike that person? You know, and, and you know, they always, they're never fair about things basically. They always claim more credit than they're due and everything. And write down those qualities and say, if you dislike that in some other person, why in the world right. would you want to have those yourself? So you just get rid of those. And it's, it's a pretty simple thing to do, but you want to be the person that if you could pick your best friend, you know, uh, that you would have the same qualities. If you want to be the best version of yourself, you have to figure out your who. Your who is your single most important value. And once you find it, it gives you the roadmap for the rest of your life. If you're ever unhappy, if you ever feel like you're not living up to your potential, if you ever feel like there's something more inside you and you want to do it, you want to hit it, you want to achieve it, you want to be all you can be, you have to figure out your who. In my book, Built to Serve, I talk about this. I give you a, a simple process to follow of how to figure out your who, but I wanna break it down for you in this video because if you're ever not happy or if you ever feel like you're living below your potential, it's because you, on a daily consistent basis, are not living your who and your credo. And the credo is the three things that make up your who. So let me break it down for me as an example, and then I'm gonna guide you the process to do it for you too. So my who is belief. I want to spread more belief in the world. I think it's the world's number one problem and I need to believe in myself more as well. I believed in myself to get to everything that I've done, but I don't believe in myself enough to do the next step. And that's a constant journey, a constant climb, a constant battle. That's, that's where growth comes from on the next level of belief for me and whatever your who is for you. You might have people in your life telling you that you're you're so great at X. People tell me, but you're Mr. Believe. How do you not believe in yourself? Well, I do for everything that I've done, but not enough yet for where I need to go. Your greatest growth is on the other side of more of whatever your who is. One of the things that um, I, I missed in my first book, Your One Word, where, where I talk about this, is I didn't spend enough time on the credo. And the credo is your definition of your who. So if you think about your who is your single most important core value, I want you to break that down into three steps. So for me, what does believe mean? Turn it from believe to hashtag believe. That's what makes it custom for Evan Carmichael. For me, believe means believing in what you're doing. That's having the passion, having the passion for the work that you're doing. I believe in what I'm doing. 
It's believing in yourself, self-confidence. And then believing that it's gonna work out, that, that if you keep putting in the work, that eventually it will work out. Because <laughs> sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you think, is this gonna go anywhere? I don't know what's happening. Why am I putting so much time in here? Believing that it will work out. So believing in the work, passion, believing in yourself, self-confidence, and believing that it will work out and having the conviction to follow through. Believe breaks down to those three things. For me, right? Passion, self-confidence, and conviction. What you need to do now is figure out what is your single most important core value, your who, and what are the three things that make it up. So in Built to Serve, there's a few exercises that I go through that I want to run through quickly here in, in this video to figure out who you are. And this is your best self. This is in alignment with your best self, right? I'm my best self when I'm living belief. When I believe in myself, when I believe in the work I'm doing, when I believe that it's gonna work out, that's my best self. That's who I really wanna be. And every day is a, is a constant battle to try to be that person. But that's who I wanna be. So for you, I want you to make a list of all the things that make you come alive. I want you to think about who your, who your favorite teacher was growing up, what your favorite books are, your favorite songs, your favorite movies. And then for each one, write down three words. So who was your favorite teacher and why? Three words, not, not paragraphs, right? Just three words. Why that teacher? You've had so many teachers in your life growing up. Why this one teacher? Why did one teacher stand out? It wasn't because she, she taught you grade 10 math, right? What was it? She made you a better human. The teacher made you a better person. Why? Right, write down those three characters, the three values that that person had. Same thing for your favorite movies, your favorite songs, what you, what you loved about your parents and how they raised you. You may not like your parents, you may have had terrible parents, but there's something that you can respect or appreciate about them. And so all the things that have made you come alive, right? Favorite book, favorite movie, favorite song, what you loved about your parents, favorite teacher, favorite friends growing up. Who are the people around you that make you come alive and then why? Three words for each. And then what I want you to do is think about as you write down these words, what are, the, what are the common elements between them? What word pops up over and over and over and over and over again? What's the one word that keeps showing up? That's your who, that's your one word, that's your most important core value. And then the other ones around it make up your who for you. Those will be your credo. The credo are the three things underneath your most important core value. So you got your who, you got your who at the top, your most important core value up here, and then the three things underneath your credo. And often inside that is something that means something to you that doesn't immediately resonate with other people. So if I talk about belief as my most important core value, if you think what is a dictionary de definition of belief or what would most people say belief is? Most people believe that it's, it's self-confidence, right? Believe in yourself. But then adding the other two layers of believing in the work, having passion, and believing that it will work out, having conviction, makes sense when I explain it, but it wouldn't be the default thing people turn to. That's what makes believe special for me. That's what you need to do for you as well. So when you look at your list of all the keywords that you've written down from all the people that you've loved and all the things that have made you come alive, now you can make your who at the top and then the credo that makes it up. And if you're having a hard time, if you're struggling to figure out, well, I don't know which, which word fits on top and which one is in the credo underneath, what I want you to think about is, is one more important than the other? Is one the parent and the other are the children? That's what we're really looking for. Is one the parent and the other are the children? My who is believe and then passion, confidence, conviction is underneath. Those are the kids. That's what makes up the parent. <laughs> so in your list of words, is one the parent? and the others are the kids. And if they're not, if you find that you've got three kids and they're all equal, the three words you come up with, they're all equal. You can't pick one over the other as one more important than the other. Then you might have to think of, well, what's the parent for these three words? If you've got three things that are all equal, great, keep them all equal. There's something higher up. There's something more meta above it. That's what you gotta figure out is your who. And some people get it right away. Some people are like, yeah, yeah, this is it. And they got it. And some people take a long time to get it. They, they have to sit with it. They gotta reflect. They gotta come back to it the next day, the next day, the next day, and look at it. And if you do that, you will get the clarity. If you come back every day and look at that list again, something will eventually pop off the page. I promise, I've seen it happen so many times with people. It can be frustrating for some people that take so long to get, 
but it's one of the most important exercises that you can ever do in your life. Like this is why so many people are lost, and confused, and unhappy because they don't know who they are. They don't know what their who is. They're constantly living somebody else's version. You're living somebody else's version of your life. You're doing the things that your parents want you to do and your friends want you to do and society wants you to do. And if you feel like you're being pulled in a million different directions by other people's expectations, it's because you don't have clarity over who you are. This exercise gives you that clarity and it will be with you for your entire life. I'm going to be 180 years old still believing in people. And you will too for whatever your one word is, whatever your who is. My wife Nina, her who is care. She's her best when she's caring for other people. She's her best when she's spreading care. She cares for herself, she cares for others. She's going to be 190 years old and she's still going to be caring about people. That's her best self. So if you want to be your best self, you want to live the life that you're capable of living. You want to be proud of yourself daily. You want to be able to know why you feel low and down and lack of energy when it comes up. And you want to have the roadmap to get to a happier place where you're serving, where you're feeling great, where you're inspired, where you're motivated, where you're helping other people out. And when you're actually living up to your potential, you have to figure out what your who is. You can go through the entire process in Built to Serve, or you can just rewind this video and watch it a few times and do the exercises because it is, it is, I think, one of the single most important lessons that if you find the answer to, will serve you for your entire life. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. When you watch a video and you just get inspired, the statistics say you have a 35% chance of actually following through. But when you get motivated through a video and then you actually create a plan of action, you have a over 90% chance of following through from 35% to 90% plus because you created a plan of action and when you commit to somebody else, commit publicly to say, I'm going to do this, it jumps to the mid 90s. That's what I want for you because Believe Nation, we take action, we follow through. We don't just get motivated. We actually do something about it so we can make the positive shift in the world that you wanna make. And so question of the day, I wanna know, what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week let me know, put it down in the comments below so I can celebrate with you too. Also, if you wanna have more self-belief and self-confidence, check out my 254 series where every day for the next 254 days, I will send you an unlisted video to your inbox to help you shift your confidence forward. The science says it can take up to 254 days of consecutive action to change a habit. You wanna change a negative habit, you wanna build that new belief, it takes up to 254 days. So for free, for the next 254 days, I will send you an unlisted video to be with you every step of the way to shift that habit forward to get in for free check out the link in the description below if i ever write a book it's going to be called why smart people do dumb things uh, <laughs> my partner says that it should be autobiographical if you ask me to write a story on what is potomac electric power worth <laughs> or something like that I, I can write the story and that's what i'm doing every day i'm assigning myself a story and then i go out and is there such thing as uh, i guess central habits that can help to shift and transform other aspects of your life because that's something that I've noticed a little bit where if I start eating better or if I start going to the gym every day, it's almost like a domino or ripple mm. effect where these other habits start to pick up naturally because yeah. I'm starting to feel better. So okay, like, cause I've been going to the gym five days a week. So now when I come home, I don't feel like binging out on junk food. I feel like eating better food or if I wake up early, uh, is that something you've noticed in your research? Yeah, sure. So there are two ways to answer this question. So the first way is um, what you're describing is often sometimes called a keystone habit. Uh, and the idea is you do one thing and it like ripples into other areas of your life. And so for me, it's exercise. Like if I go to the gym, then I get the benefits of exercise, but I also tend to eat better. I like, for some reason, I just don't want to waste it. Um, I also focus more. So I have sort of that like post workout high, uh, after I, after I work out, uh, and then I sleep better because I'm tired from the workout, which means I wake up the next morning and I have better energy. Um, and at no point was I trying to build better sleep habits or energy habits or focus habits or nutrition habits, but all that kind of just came as a side effect of doing this one thing of going to the gym. Mm. Some other common, uh, keystone habits are budgeting. Sometimes people say when they pay off debt, you'll, then they'll like start to get in shape or they, um, you know, build, but they're more social and have better relationships or like, there's all kinds of things that kind of come out of that. Um, 
going for a daily walk is a really big one. It's a very common one among creators in particular. There's a book called Daily Rituals by Mason Curie. And he basically just writes down like what, I don't know, it's 100 or 150 famous like creators and scientists and whatever, what their daily routines were. And a lot of them were raging alcoholics and on amphetamines and all kinds of other stuff. But the ones who uh, were more healthy, a daily habit, a daily habit like walking was a really big part of their routine. Um, visualization is a big one, especially for performers like a comedian or something. They'll often visualize the same kind of result or professional athletes uh, before they step out on the stage or step out on the court. If you want another amazing Warren Buffett video, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. If somebody told me 10 years ago what was going to happen in the next 10 years, we could have made a lot of money in the bond market together, you know, but, but it, it's, it, there's always a reason afterwards. Tomorrow's paper will say stocks went down today because of, you know,